Hello and welcome to Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever. This is a replay review of a ladder match between John Ice or yeah, I guess John Ice 227 and Platinum Wiser. We're going to be reviewing John John's gameplay. Uh, I did actually review a game for Platinum Wiser. Find it on the channel. John is UEF. And that's what he does. So we have three engineers, a lab, a scout, engineer, another lab, and a scout. Another engineer, another lab, and a scout, and an engineer. So just straight away, if you're going to make a lab, you probably don't want to make it so late as this fourth unit here and then you definitely don't want to make labs this late uh, into the build queue because labs it's all about the speed it's all about how they can be in positions where tanks can't be because they have half the build time and are much faster to get across the map so you want to make them early and then not make them later unless you're planning to use them for say a ghetto gunship or something and definitely like seven, eight, nine, tenth unit of your first factory is going to be too late, generally. So second thing, I've already noticed the, the uh, rally point out of the factory has not been changed. So that's one of the first things you want to do. As soon as you build the factory, it starts, it's in construction, you can already change the rally point. So you want to change the rally point so that your engineers point in the correct direction. So you can see here, this is the just default rally point now if I put it to the side here the engineer is going to build facing this way and if I put it to the left hand side the engineer is going to be facing this way when it starts building and so you can reduce roll off time now another thing we have a mistake a misunderstanding of how the reclaim works so John has seen players do this sort of order here and the problem is that you need to give this order directly from the factory. If it doesn't come from the factory, then you don't get the increased reclaim range from the engineer. So right now, this is just a normal attack move order. What you want here is a factory attack move order. And then you can move the attack order around after the fact and put your engineer in a different spot to reclaim more and you get a much larger range and the engineer will basically just stand on the attack move order and reclaim everything in about this range in a circle. So right now all he's done is give a move order and attack move order. So if we look at Platinumizer I'm sure he's done it correctly. You can see the factory actually has the attack move order here. So this engineer is going to get here and it's going to reclaim without moving. And uh, this other engineer is doing some very try hard manual reclaim with move orders to avoid breaking trees it definitely still gonna break trees I would say but uh, it's pretty good so watch here we'll watch this engineer and watch how it won't move it's gonna get to the location and now it's gonna start reclaiming some things are already in the normal build range but look it's gonna just continue reclaiming not move if we look at John's they've already started moving around like this one here and they are getting some reclaim but it's not the desired effect so there's a couple things at the start see here the replay is a little it doesn't always show the correct order so you can't see the attack move anymore but you can see he hasn't moved at all and it's still reclaiming well outside the build range of the engineer this is the desired desired effect so let's see how the labs do John's also gone third air now I think he might be struggling maybe a bit see he's gonna have less mass and power income now see this engineer because it just has a normal attack move is now off doing things reclaiming single trees which is not effective at all look at how much the mass is going up here it's getting less than one mass basically per tree maybe one and sometimes slightly well no that's actually from this engineer here getting actual tree groups 
basically getting less than one mass from each tree, and that's this is just an extremely inefficient use of uh, build power. These guys should be expanding to mexes, expanding here, getting this reclaim here, which is nice mass. This is just this is a really bad waste. It's like having tanks idle in your base or factory building a factory and then not building anything out of it. It's very inefficient. So we have the lab here. It killed a Selene. And now it's here waiting for a an engineer to pop up, but Platinumizer is ready and waiting and sends tanks ahead of the engineers. So we have a bit too much power and really I think the difficulty there is just a slow expansion. So no engineer taking these yet. If we look at let's see what Plat has done. He already has expanded here, already has expanded here. So straight away, Platinumizer has more income and it's basically free. He has four mexes more and that's a huge advantage already. Now we have uh, ACU move order. So we have the classic trailing engineer that's been assisting the commander just following him to the expansion. This happens pretty regularly and uh, you want to avoid it. It's a waste of obviously build power again. That's why I'm seeing here each engineer costs as much as a tank almost exactly so all these engineers doing essentially nothing could be tanks on the map attacking now that's a nice lab managed to evade the escort the tank here and get a good engineer kill so that's quite good now when we had some scouting over the base now what are you actually looking for with the with the tank so with the scout I should say so what you want to do see scouting the base now again is not actually not actually too useful what you want to use this for is to see where he's sending his army so what are you looking to defend namely say these engineers this engineer here oh yeah one thing I didn't say about the let me just slow this down to about the the ACU moving this way I mean this is fine you can move here but really, you generally move out of the base here and move in front, and this is why. So you have two tanks here coming for this expansion, which is one of the most important expansions. Maybe the most important. Well, let's not say the most important. This is very important as well. But this engineer is doomed. He has no tanks protecting him. We have all the tanks in the, on the top side. And not in very aggressive positions so this guy's unprotected the ac generally comes out of the base and moves here and this protects the expansion and then you can actually afford to not send tanks uh to defend here but right now because of where the ac is you have to have tanks here to defend this and this is going to be really painful because it's three mexes which is nothing to sniff at that i mean it's the biggest expansion you have next to your base. You have two mechs here and two mechs here. And also you have all this reclaim. A lot of rocks. A lot of rocks to grab and they're very important. Now about units. Well I was saying about the air scout. What are you trying to achieve with the air scout? So you want to be looking for where they're sending tanks. So you didn't see that these tanks were coming. Until now and Thankfully, you haven't lost engineers out of it, but you didn't see these tanks coming either. And your air scout is just idle. Now you can see these engineers, so you should be sending your tanks directly here. Now basically, all anytime you're playing Loki, you should be sending tanks to the, this location. Because this, generally, engineers are going to walk across here and try and build a factory to try and secure this expansion. So you want to have a tank there ready one of your first tanks can go there and uh, it's very very common it's basically done in almost every game and uh, yeah you can see the engineers so you should easily be able to deny those engineers now sending all the tanks to the top here this is a this is a bad decision I would say because one it's gonna take a while for anything to be expanding to here and there's not and also to here so sending to the top is fine send a couple here and park them to kill these engineers delay expansion that's good but 
other tanks should be sent. See if you can do some damage here, as your opponent did. Defend your expanding engineers. Uh, try and attack the tanks which are going to be parked here. And also, yeah, you can raid this expansion as well. Things like that. But sending all your tanks directly up to this top expansion is no good. Because it's just not, not that useful. There's not going to be anything there for a while. Sending all your tanks is just overkill. So the ACU has just walked all the way down here. And now he's walking past... He's walking past an expansion. And somehow that engineer didn't die to the tank. He very nearly did. And now he's very he's completely unprotected. But uh, yeah, don't walk past expansions with your ACU. And also, yeah, you definitely need to put more than one engineer on hydras. Always have two engineers on hydras. Sometimes more. I mean... Yeah, pretty much all the time you, when you're building a Hydra, you want to have more than one engineer because it takes 1 minute 20. That's way too long to wait for that uh, that Hydra to be built. So you need more more build power on Hydra Carbons. Now, these tanks are idle and they're not at the position where the engineers are. And look, this guy's going to build a build a factory now. And you can see where Platinumizer is sending his tanks. So first, he had... Faster expansion to his mexes. That gives a mass advantage. Then he attacks your main expansion, which is not defended by the AC, which is a, a bad mistake. And now he's just going to continue piling pressure because the ACU isn't there. The top side, he's not worried about. He's not sending tanks there. He sent some tanks there to try and raid. And that was denied. But now he's going to be sending his AC up here to expand. He doesn't really need tanks. He'll need tanks once the ACU leaves. He can, he'll need some tanks here and a radar to spot. But right now you're very far behind. You can see the income is very poor in comparison. We have 9 T1 mexes. Versus, oh, only 11. But we have engineers reclaiming these rocks. So if we look at reclaim, it will change shortly. And total mass is quite a big... Quite a big difference here. This engineer that was sent back away from the ACU has been killed by this tank. So, again, just, uh, well, it's a lack of vision. This is a nice move. The Selene blocking the mech spot. To uh, stop this, you need to just put a reclaim order on this or give an attack move, although he might reclaim trees, but... Pretty much have to give an attack move. Or you can ground fire with tanks. That works too. When there's no reclaim, you can no trees around, you can just give it a small attack move and it'll automatically kill the... the... the Selene. And this factory is built. That's a really, really... yeah, missed opportunity there. And here we have no vision, so... You can't really send your tanks in here just blind. You can just put a radar behind this hill where it's very safe and it gives you perfect vision over the expansion. Let's put it anywhere here. And that's going to help your tanks a lot. So the ACU is expanded here. That's a weird... Uh, a weird PD. So the problem with this is that you're going to end up wasting a lot of time building four extra wall sections for no reason. I would I would delete those from the template. I'm sure that is a template. But uh yeah, don't don't waste so much time adding all those unnecessary walls. So it looks like he will successfully raid the right side anyway. You can send the rest of these tanks down here to finish off the factory. Yeah, that's exactly what you're doing. And but this this and this being denied is just so huge, and it didn't really need to happen. You could have expanded here with the ACU and then walked over here. Would have been fine. And also, you could have easily defended this if your ACU was sent in this direction. And you would have defended without, without much trouble. So now the top side, well, you didn't take the reclaim. This is a, this is a problem. 
That's a 140 mass, 100, oh, 113 mass. It could have been yours. So, let's see what else are we doing. It's just normal T1 land. One factory, one air factory. We got a transport now. Transports are very nice on Loki, help you fill in the gaps. Say here. Now, I really. If you don't have the radar ring on, at least a lot of pl some players play with all the range rings on. But you should at least have radar on, in my opinion, because it's very important to know where you're blind and where you actually have intel. Okay, we have a scout. So we have two T2 Mexes and a and T2 Land Factory. So you need to be immediately considering what this means so you need to basically be moving to t2 land this factory should be dead these engine these tanks should be over here killing this factory it's almost dead could easily kill it and that would be very helpful for you still haven't sent tanks in here to s kill this uh, just a single bomber is very nice for dealing with these annoying raids these engineers have been dropped, but they're quite idle, so actually just walking them would achieve the same effect, and uh, you wouldn't need to use APM. So now you have the transport, you want to try keep it active. Grab a few tanks, drop them here. Try and scout, see where the inties are. And uh, see where, where you can drop, see if it... If he has his Inties parked here, obviously, which is common place to park them, by the way. Common place to park your Inties up in the front because this is a, a common place to drop. And obviously, you're going to have to go around. You could drop back here. Be annoying. Dropping here. You can drop here when there's no production. And there probably isn't production here. Yeah, you can see there's actually nothing here to defend. There's a couple of factories. And some engineers, but a drop here could actually be useful. Now, if you're really advanced, then before you're dropping, you send a bomber. Scout, spot the radars. Send the bomber just ahead of the transport to kill the radar. And then the drop cannot really be intercepted. So we have T2 land switch, finally. Now, you probably want to be faster about that. Once, once you see this, you want to quickly start moving to T2. You can make some extra engineers out of your factories if you need them in your base to assist and get that production up. So we have a, a bit of a power problem. Definitely a slow on the power production. I think it stopped at some point. I think this is a bad place to put uh, power generators versus uh, Seraphim. If you just send some Arties here along the water, he barely has to even come out of the water before he can kill a lot of production, power production for you. Gotta be wary of that. I would always try to include a bomber in the in the air build queue. Obviously not too many, but just having the odd bomber, they're always useful. If you want to you want to do something like bomb a radar, bomb some TMD, uh, kill some annoying tank in the back of your base that's not going to be protected by air. So we have a big build up now of mass as we've just gotten all our expansions and there's a lack of power to spend that right now. I have a bit of a drop. Looks like you're aiming for this. I would, if you're gonna drop here, I would just drop, drop here. Send the air, air scout overhead. See what's happening. Now let's look at the army. So we have 50 T1 tanks. We need a fast T2 production scale up. So we, we look at the base here, platinumizer, and we can see. Oh, we can see T2 air. See T2 PGM. We see four mexes. We see two support factories so there's going to be a lot of Ilshavo here now this is a weird drop so look here this is this can all be killed by this drop right this drop here can only attack this as well so you're basically dropping the same place 
when you could have actually killed two expansions here this could move back this could drop here and kill all of this there's nothing to defend now if you had scouted beforehand and you would easily see that now actually you could even pick these back up and drop them over in my opinion this is not useful sending t1 tanks to attack t1 P P gens is just uh, a waste of time really Look how long it's going to take them to kill one T1 P gen. Okay. One P gen down, one engineer down, and that is a waste of everyone's time. This one is effective. But you could have sent these tanks up here, and these tanks could have dropped here, and then you'd be. That would be much, much better for you. So. We see a lot of T2 production from Plat. And actually, here's another place. So we need to stop making strikers. No more strikers at all. This this is not a good build queue because that's going to give you t a lot, far too many T1A. Well, I guess it's fine since he has T2 air, but uh, you want to stop building strikers completely. No value in having in building more of those. Just want to go pillars pillars you want to have few power shields which you are mixing in which is good but already you're in a really bad spot because his t2 production has been going for so long that and you're so late to the t2 stage that he's going to have a big big unit advantage right about now i mean you already have 13 pillars that's quite good but like they're all spread out in various locations and now we have the problem of no mass so when you uh, started building the T2 power you should have stopped these engineers from building any more T1 and maybe even reclaimed a couple of T1 P gens as well so you've now overbuilt power you're basically one T2 P gen overbuilt and uh, and also you, also, you have too much too much building right now. You probably have a lot of mechs upgrading, yes. And you still have reclaim here. So, what you want to do... Well, you're fighting this battle. And there's a lot of Ilshis. Now, your ACU should be here. You can't afford to have your ACU idle. It's too powerful. You're on the T2 stage where there's a lot of T2 tanks that need to be overcharged. That's the weakness of the Ilshivo is overcharged because they're so expensive each overcharge is very valuable so your ACU should be here and it could even have an upgrade uh, but even if it doesn't it needs to be here to help the tanks out and defend and uh, overcharge some Ilshis. We have a T2 transport full of T2 tanks coming in and you're reacting but it probably is gonna land it's a strange place for him to drop where there's only two on mechs is not a good drop from him. This is a nice drop from you, but it's just slightly idle. And this this is really dangerous here. So this is not a strong army. It's all T1. There's no land scouts, which is a crucial mistake here to use an attack like that. With no no land scouts, you've no vision. Other than, well, you've no radar, only vision. And you do have a couple of flax, that's nice. But maybe you've scouted this, maybe not. But you need, you, this engineer here could help out a lot, build some radar. But this looks like it's going to turn into a mass donation. Now it's good the flax are defending versus the gunships, but now, oh... Looks like an air loss. And these Ilshivo are now running over this expansion. And there's so much reclaim here. All the while this in, this ACU is idle. So we've lost... Both these expansions are now going to die. And these are the expansions that the ACU should be in. And it said he's chilling in the water. Now you're obviously... A lot of games are going to end with... ACU dying. ACU suiciding. ACU getting sniped. But that does not mean that you get to chill in the water and still win the game versus a player more than 200 points ahead of you. You gotta 
you can't avoid risks. And so the ACU has to be here. And if, if the ACU is here, if you had a gun ACU here, you could hold off all these Ishmo. And a gun ACU is not that expensive. It's not very expensive. And now, at this point, I think the game is not, not salvageable. But let's see what happens. So this, this move here. Yeah. I think we all know that this is not a good move. He has the majority of his production here. He has T2 air production here. We have one flak left. The other flak has died. And it's like five pillars. And three arties and some T1 units. I mean, there's just no possible reality in which you can go towards his base here. It's not possible. Uh, oh, I meant to say about the upgrading. So you went into like a minus 80 mass stall. So what you want to do there is you had all these three upgrading. So just pause these two. Pause that, pause that. And then assist this one. Keep it on, pause. Assist it and then move on and assist the rest of them. And then also get an engineer to get the reclaim here. Also, these trees are very good to reclaim. Get a factory in this expansion for reclaiming them. You can see Plat has reclaimed a decent amount of them. Now, this, this expansion, you just walked past this expansion and gave a move order into the base. You didn't even kill this expansion in the end. So, that's really, really bad error. We also have a lot of mass here to be grabbed. And you have an engineer in the area, so you could just go over, give some a couple of manual orders. Now, uh, people don't want to do that, I guess, but when you have chunky T2 Rex here waiting to be taken and you're behind, you gotta, you got to do it. So now we have more mass problems. And, uh, yeah, so I guess you're just not, uh, not spotting it when you need to be I mean on a map like this you can sort of uh, oh I mean this is the what's really telling about that is that you've actually lost two expansions and then you are uh, still mass overflowing so you need to be periodically upgrading factories increasing your production so when you when you queue up mass mass extractor upgrades, then you need to also increase your production alongside that. You can't just say, "Oh, I have too much mass." Upgrade mexes and then do nothing with your build power, because then this happens. So, I mean, it would have been even worse if you hadn't lost these two expansions. So, uh, I think for one, I mean, you can look at what Plat has done here and say that you have made way too many T2 Maxes. That's for sure. You don't want to... You, I mean, if you are 5 T2 Maxes ahead of your opponent, uh, you got to be worried unless you're absolutely crushing him because he's probably going to have more units than you. And given that Platinumizer has even better T2 units than you do, it's going to be really bad. <clears throat> And yeah, now he's dropping in all locations. Your front T2 Maxes have no protection. They're gonna, they are almost all dead now. This army is still alive somehow, but uh, you have finally cleared out this expansion. Doing a raid here, it's fine. But uh, the game is truly over. You can see you have no very little vision. You have 24 pillars. Let's see. He probably has even more Ilshis than that. Yeah, 27 Ilshis. And they are a lot more expensive. You can see here, 360 mass, pillars like 220 or 200. Yeah, 198. And uh, yeah, not much hope here. We have a commander upgrade. I mean, the only hope is sniping. Let's see where the ACU is. Well, he's here, he has a single flak, he has no upgrades. He's definitely vulnerable. But uh, I'm, it's too late, really, to move to that option. Oh, no, you're not trying it again, are you? I think we're going to the base again. We didn't make it there last time. 
But uh, yeah, you just can't just can't attack a base like that. Also, also with no vision, just blind. See, in this scenario, it's better to just chill and just force him to send an army bigger than yours to reclaim his expansion, or send some units up here. But just leave some so that if he sends a tank, sends an engineer on a company, then you get to deny the expansion again. And this is a mass donation. And you made him build one PD. He probably didn't even need to do that. Oh, your gun, your head is above the water and your <laughs> the gun is under the water. It's not good. Not good for you. This is a good fight though. That's a very good fight. Still see how long the Ilshis take to die though. Now stay on top of the units as well. Bit of micro. See this Ilshi is now going to get away. Yeah, I think we can speed up now because it's really hopeless, unfortunately. So, I was pretty harsh. Point out a lot of mistakes. Uh, but, uh, hopefully some of them are useful and you can use them. Especially the start, you know, the attack move from the factory. That's something you need to know, really. Uh, but overall, quite good. I mean, you don't have a high rating or anything. So it's not like I'm expecting all you to do all these things correctly. Just informing. And uh, now we're dying to gunships, unsurprisingly. I mean, there's nothing you can really do at this point. Well, you could send the flak over. <laughs> That's one thing, I guess. But also, ducking under the water works. So you're going to retake this expansion, it seems. I'm wondering where the rest of the Ilshis are. We have a, a mass float, so I need to unpause these factories. The ACU is back into hiding, unfortunately. Let's see what Platt is doing. Now, somehow, the score is very even, so... Actually, Platt has not really taken advantage of this, so I think he probably... Well, this was... Where have all the Ilshis gone? Well, we have... They're all back here. That's a... Yeah, that's just a very bad place when the units, I guess. But... This game should still be quite over. We're going T3 land now. Not a bad option. But once you go T3 land, all this T2 production basically needs to stop. Except maybe make some parashields and flak and things. So, let's see if you do that. Similar to T1 and T2, once you start making pillars, focus on pillars, don't make strikers anymore. You can keep making arties, scouts, T1A, that's fine, don't make strikers. Scun ACU needs to get an escort of of flak and then get the hell out of the water. Also a transport. A transport to grab the expansions would be good. And we're gonna need anti-air. Maybe throw up some... Yeah, this should be making T1 anti-air. Because you can see he's been raiding you with gunships. So just react with some of those T1 towers. Don't make T2 towers. They're too expensive really to just fight. Defending versus gunship raids. And now we have a nice amount of flak around the ACU. You can feel a bit safe. And unfortunately, the T2 production hasn't stopped. It's a mistake, and we have an idle air factory as well. So we have actually no air units whatsoever. That's a big problem, and that's actually why you have still enough power. If you are actually making air you would be in a, in a bad situation power wise so this this bar here while having an idle air factory should tell you you need you need definitely a second t2p gen you can't really live on one t2p gen at the t3 land stage it's just not uh, 
Not good. We also have a bad rally point here. Yeah. So rally points rally points are very important. So you want to recognize where your units should be. Why what positions you really need to defend. So you're going to need units here. Going to need a few units here. Not so many though really. Unless you see there's a big push coming. And uh, yeah. Units at the bottom where you're going to. Supposed to have your main expansions. So you could be a lot faster. Definitely make some transports. And. At this point when you. When you see that you've had your. Air factory paused. Which you have now seen it. And you need to then react and put a lot of production on it. Or increase the number of flax you have. Although you have a decent number. This this attack here. So This is a common mistake. So you're sending many T2 tanks here, right? And you don't have radar here. You did have a radar, I think. Back here somewhere. Maybe here. So you could see you had quite decent vision a moment ago. But like all he has here... T1, T1 mexes, and you're gonna send like 10 T2 tanks here. Now he can react easily. He knows you're coming, most likely, or he should, and uh, he can react easily with a similar number of Ilshiva, which are gonna wreck you, coming from his base, which is much closer than your base. And the only possible thing you could kill here really is T1 mexes. It's just not worth it at all to uh, use the T2 army like that. Now here, Miss Micro, you need to be on top of these Ilshis, so you can see it turning around now. But these are all wasted time while these units aren't in view. So, and again, Titans now moving out of range, so just stick right to them and make sure you kill them here. Here's another blind attack can't possibly achieve anything with blind attack I mean well you can but it's a very bad idea to attack this deep again no 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 vision if you're attacking blind expect to fail here's a drop from platinumizer the uh, so you've spotted all these tanks back here but you haven't fixed the rally point just a simple simple error and I don't think we've started building that other T2B gen yet which is a mistake because you're not gonna be able to scale up uh, production you need to fix this like a couple minutes ago you should have been starting you can just slowly start building it with one or two engineers and you always want to keep up with your power production because it's very very painful if you start start losing that so the unit use while you're you're sending a lot of tanks up here so look look at what two two tanks achieved you made it all the way across the map and you raided them what what can these all this army achieve so while while you're sending all these tanks up here that can do i mean two tanks achieved what you want to happen which is raiding it's all you want you don't need to send your entire army here because while doing that, you leave yourself undefended and Platinumizer can attack you and raid you. Now this expansion is still not taken a long time after it was uh, cleared out except for this mechs and, and PD. And it's still not going to be taken. So that's, that's a really quite a bad mistake. This army, yeah, it's just a waste of waste of an army, and now we have a big army coming for the ACU. So this is dangerous, and without that T2P gen, we have no power for overcharge, which is the main weapon versus the Ilshis, and this ACU is going to die right now because of that T2P gen or lack thereof. Uh, yeah, this is the end. So, in this scenario, pause everything in the base. Select your entire base, pause it, and then use all your power income. Turn off all your shields as well. If you have a hotkey for that, it's very helpful. And then you can overcharge. And then, once you've 
whether you die or not, maybe maybe you survive. You probably don't, but maybe you do, and then you can turn everything back on again. But uh, yeah, actually, not too bad getting back into the game there. Planomizer. Well, ooh, did those guys get dropped there? Probably. That's a nice drop. I don't think they ran there anyway. But uh, yes, many, many mistakes, of course, as we expect. Could look at anyone's game and see quite a few mistakes. So some are more important than others, though. So I think unit unit positioning. You need to really recognize the most important place for your units to be. Make sure you have your rally points in the right place. Like this expansion regularly died because it had no units, had no intel. Put it, put radars here so you can see what's coming. This expansion died over and over multiple times while when it was T1 and T2 mechs is there. I think going T3, that was a good decision. But And you did pause all the production here, I can see. Which is good. Uh, yes, not not the power situation wasn't so good. Building a T2P gen and continuing to make T1 power, not so good. Uh, not adding more T2P gens as you needed them. Sort of forgot about your power production. Uh, upgrading mexes without uh, increasing your production in tandem with that. So you did in the end. That's had had a better balance, but at times it was full mass power. Mex is just finished upgrading and things like, and then, well, they get killed because the production wasn't there to defend them. Some some attacks which weren't so strong, sending a lot of T2 tanks after T1 Mex is not efficient. I mean, you saw here the best example where two. Two tanks raided this expansion perfectly, and then an entire army floods in after. And there's really no reason if you if you could just send the army here, then you could take all these expansions at the top and then defend everything easily with this army. Use transports to take your expansions back. This expansion should have been taken back. The ACU should not vacate. And absolve itself of defending expansions so early in the game can't really afford to do that and yeah whatever else was mentioned in the throughout the replay hope this helped um, and yes if you want to replay reviewed then send it in to me you can message me on discord or on faf or something like that and thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time